Pesticides had become a way of life in post-war America, and by 1955, the country was being treated with more than 600 million pounds a year. But in 1962, the chemical industry, the government, and agribusiness were accused of poisoning the environment in a book called Silent Spring, written by Rachel Carson. Her concern was not shared by many. The most famous pesticide at the time was DDT. It had saved millions of lives in World War II by preventing the spread of disease. It was cheap, effective, and apparently safe. Following the war, DDT and other pesticides were put to civilian use on a massive scale. They worked wonders and production exploded. From 1945 to 1955, annual pesticide use on farms went from 125 million pounds to over 600 million. Soon, government agencies began treating even the suburbs with DDT. People thought it was a good thing because they got action in solving a problem as they conceived it. They were, for example, complaining about mosquitoes. And if the spray truck came down the street, uh, they were told to just stay indoors for a few minutes and everything would be all right. So you had the government endorsing a product and you had the chemical industry pushing it very aggressively. Public health departments staged demonstrations to convince the public of DDT's effectiveness and safety. Enthusiasm for the chemical knew no bounds, and few were questioning the wisdom of such use. Public places and private backyards were being treated whether people liked it or not. In 1957, planes sprayed a Massachusetts bird sanctuary owned by Olga Huckins, a friend of Carson's. In fury and desperation, Huckins told her what had happened. The birds showed all the symptoms typical of DDT poisoning. Huckins knew that the planes would be back in spite of her protests. She asked Carson for help. Carson later remembered how the thought of a spring silent of birdsong had moved her to action. It was your personal letter to me that started it all. In it, you told what had happened and begged me to find someone in Washington who could help. It was in the course of finding that someone that I realized I must write the book. Carson attacked what she saw as a heavy-handed, public-be-damned attitude behind certain government programs. They sprayed truck gardens and dairy farms, fish ponds and salt marshes, showering insecticide over children at play. A quarter horse drank from a trough in a field which the planes had sprayed. Ten hours later, it was dead. See, all the big programs prior to that were largely federal lands. This was a big federal program that began to treat private lands, including farmlands. And all of a sudden, the milk was contaminated and the farmers couldn't sell their milk. And people uh, were worried about their wildlife uh, it, it just led to a clamor. Carson's dire warning was that by poisoning nature, people were ultimately poisoning each other and subverting what she considered a fundamental right to a healthy environment. See, what people don't understand is that Rachel Carson wasn't for the complete outlawing of pesticides or chemicals to help agriculture. Her point of view was that it was over abused that it wasn't used properly it wasn't under control carson knew that the only way to bring about lasting change was to encourage government to take a leadership role president kennedy's science advisory committee released its report it vindicated carson's warning and ended with this conclusion until the publication of silent spring by rachel carson people were generally unaware of the toxicity of pesticides. But Silent Spring transcended the pesticide issue and forced people to think about the environment in a new way. And within a decade, sweeping environmental laws were enacted.